Facts of Mars. And once again, we're getting more BS from the scientific community. Search for life on Mars is about to get weird. Since the Dallas Space Age, NASA, and other agencies have spent billions of dollars to recon Mars, assailing it with spacecraft flybys full of snapping orbiters and landers most diving onto its surface. The odds are good, many scientists say, for the red planet. Being an extraterrestrial address for alien life, good enough to sustain decades worth of landing very expensive robots, to ping it with radars, zap it with lasers, trundle across its terrain, and scoop up its dirt. Now, that's an understatement of the year about its being, the odds being good. And against all odds, and researchers hope for watershed discovery, Mars remains a poker-faced world that holds its cards tight. No convincing signs of life have emerged. That is a lie. You are a liar. Liar, liar, pants on fire. We've been through this. My problem is, uh, time right now. The search becomes more heated and some would say more desperate scientists are entertaining a never increasing number of possible explanations for Martian biology as an ocean. For example, there could there be a cover up where the marsh harsh Martian environment somehow obliterates all biosignatures, all signs of past or present life? Or perhaps a life it's just so alien that its biosignatures are simply unrecognizable to us, hidden in plain view. Yeah, there's a cover-up, all right, but uh, Mars isn't the one doing the cover-up. It's you people that are igno ignoring the obvious evidence of plants and uh, alien construction. I've shown the straight lines in Mars uh, videos completely impossible for those to be natural. Some goes for miles and make the Nazca lines look like child's play. Of course, the perplexing quest to find life on Mars may have a simple solution. It's not there and never was. That is a lie. Your nose is growing longer, Pinocchio. But as the proceedings of this year's Astro biology science conference held here in April May clear, life-seeking scientists are not giving up yet. Instead, they're getting more creative, proposing new strategies and technologies to shape generation of Mars exploration. I'm not going to read this whole thing. This is a long article. Uh... I'll read some expert excerpts here. It all started with started out with follow water, not necessarily follow life, but follow one of the basic requirements for living systems, says Arizona State University Jack Farmer, referring to NASA's oft repeated mantra for Mar Martian exploration. In other words, he ignored the obvious plants and the uh, evidence for the archaeology. The, structures, the different objects, and just call them rocks, and that way you can dismiss them. So you, Mr. Farmer, are a liar. You are a liar, 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 pants on fire. Without looking water, Farmer points out one well, naively think organisms can't function. The reality may be more complex on Earth, some resilient organizations, such as 
tardigrades can enter a profound, almost indefinite state of hibernation when deprived of moisture, preserving their desiccated tissues while neither growing nor reproducing. It is possible, Farmer says, that my, Martian microbes may spend most of their time as indoor spores waiting for something good to happen, only spring to life when given the right and very rare conditions. That is BS. Certain varieties of earthly extreme files, microbes that live in extremes of temperatures, pressures, salinity, and so on, could exhibit similar behavior. Farmer says that there is no, is as yet no general consensus about the best way to go about life detection on the red planet. This is in, this is due in no small part to runaway pace of progress in biotechnology, which has led to innovations such as chemistry labs shrunk down to fit on a computer chip. These technologies have been revolutionizing the medical field and started to enter into concepts of life detections on Mars, he explains. Things move so fast and that today's best technology for finding Martian biology may be tomorrow's laughably obsolete dead end. And this goes on and on. This is the usual dog and pony show that we get out of these people. Let's see what Penelope, Boston of NASA Astrobiology Institute and the Ames Research Center says. That's my bias, she says. Given Mars' current state with all challenging surface manifestations of dryness, radiation, and little atmosphere, the best hope for life still extant on Mars is subsurface. The subsurface, she says, may also offer better chances of preserving life, that is, of fossils, even if only single-celled organisms. That the it's getting deeper and deeper, folks. And this is starting to piss me off. So I'm gonna I think I'll go at this point. Uh, uh these people are just ignoring tons and tons and tons of evidence. Both archaeol archaeology plus uh obvious plant life. I've shown it in the Mars from Above photo uh, videos that I do, I've shown it, it's on the, uh, surface photos, too, you see, there are plants that are obvious, if you just look, if you just bother looking, you'll see them. You don't need NASA's permission to see this stuff. You don't need to sit there and say, well, NASA says they're not there, so they're not there. That's a lie. Anyway, that's my rant for today. It's getting mighty deep. The BS is getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Unbelievable. I'm Artifacts of Mars. <laughs>